Hi, everyone. We're going to give people just about another minute or two um, to join us through Zoom. So if you're here, you should see uh, the starting slide for today, and we're just letting people log in. So if you need to, you know, refresh a beverage or, or grab, um, you know, something off your desk, we'll get started here in just about a minute or two. Hi, everyone. I'm moving, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, Representative Confirst. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and get underway since we have Representative Confirst with us and she has limited time today. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we give her an opportunity to speak. So I wanted to say hello, welcome everyone to our environmental advocacy training uh, as part of our virtual advocacy day today. So delighted to have you join us online. Uh, Representative Converse is there at the Capitol, but we're uh, meeting virtually and it's going very well. We've got almost 40 people in the room, the virtual room here with us now. And so just very briefly, uh, I'm Angelisa Belden with IEC. Uh, our agenda for this hour, we're going to spend just the first few minutes to get some tips and uh, you know, inside thoughts on ways to connect well with legislators when you're when you're meeting or contacting them. Uh, then we'll spend a few minutes with Alicia Basto, our staff person here, on how to be an effective advocate. Then we'll spend a little bit of time. We were going to have um, one of our lobbyists, uh, lobbying partners, with us today, but he was unable to make it for a subcommittee meeting. Uh, so Jessica Maldonado with PolicyWorks is going to talk a little bit more about effective messaging, and then we'll have a few minutes for Q and A there at the end. So with that, I am going to turn things over. Uh, to Representative Jennifer Converse to introduce herself and, and share just a few thoughts. Thank you, Representative Converse. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to have this chance to be here. I'd love to hang out for the whole hour. I actually um, teach political communication at Drake and teach classes on how to lobby. So this is kind of my jam. And But I know that Jessica will handle that part very nicely, much better than me, probably. And I could learn a few things. So my name is Jennifer Converse. I'm a state rep from Windsor Heights, just right here in central Iowa. And I represent three cities in Polk County, Windsor Heights, the Polk County part of Clive, and the northern part of West Des Moines. So um, I am a, a Democrat. I'm also, I also serve as a Democratic whip here in our caucus, which means I kind of am a deputy leader or something to that effect, however you want to think of it. I just kind of try to help. So um, this is my second term, and I can give you some thoughts on what it's been like to um, be lobbied by different organizations and by different individuals. And what I can tell you is the top line would be the most effective contacts are contacts directly from constituents. So um, contacts from constituents are always the ones that we look at first and the ones that we prioritize getting back to. Cynical people will say that's because those are the people who are gonna vote for us. Um, more altruistic people will say that's because the people it's the people we serve and that's our job. I would say it's both. And so um, we always want to hear from constituents and we'll sort of triage those. I like to sort of describe my inbox as, an, as a crash scene and um, how do we triage what we're going to do with that inbox. So first and foremost, constituents who write me personal emails. So this is all about email first and then I'll talk about other ways. But 
constituents who contact me with personal emails, Representative Confers, I live in your district and here are some things I care about. Ones that someone sat down and read or and wrote um, are the ones that I'm most sort of engaged with. Second to that would be um, constituents who reach out with form emails. So you click a button that says contact your legislator here and it sends me automatically a form email. I don't ignore those. It's just that those are always sort of the second tier that I reach out, that I respond to. Then it becomes people outside of the district who contact me personally with you know, their own issue and advocacy. And finally, it's um, people who contact me from outside the district um, who contact every legislator with a mass email. I'm not saying those people aren't important or they don't matter. I'm saying that if I have to triage that crash scene of my inbox, they're gonna be last because their state representative will be getting back to them, right? I wouldn't say that I'm unique here. I think most of us spend most of our time trying to respond to our constituents first, it just makes sense. And so if you're advocating on environmental issues that matter to you, even if you think, that's the second thing I would say is, even if you think that your legislator is with you and cares about this issue and they're already there, still contact us. Because I have a spreadsheet of who's contacted us on which side of each issue. And it helps me to be able to say in making an argument to my colleagues or to other um, advocates, you know what, there are 75 people who have contacted me in support of this issue. So don't take for granted the fact that your legislator may be with you. It helps us to know that others out there care about this issue too. Um, <clears throat> finally, um, so, so that's email, that's sort of why you should reach out even if they're with you. And then also phone calls work too. You know, most of us list our phone calls in our, um, on the website, or we also have an office phone here. It's important for you to know we don't have a phone on our desk. And so, except for on personal phones. And so when you call the switchboard, um, we get a voicemail email that comes to us that explain that, that allows us to listen to the voicemail. So um, there's a little bit of a delay there, but, um, and normally what we'll do is call back and say, thank you so much for reaching out. And then finally, in-person visits. Now, um, I, I don't feel that I can comfortably tell you to advocate at the Capitol right now. I don't feel that um, we're following enough COVID protocols to make it safe for me to recommend people come to the Capitol. It's certainly your right, and I would not deny you that access, of course, but just know that there's not a mask mandate here and um, that social distancing is pretty tough. If you do choose to come to the Capitol, um, then there's an easy way for us to, to hear from you. You can send in a slip at the front door of the Iowa House. They'll send it in to us and we'll come out and meet with you. Again, constituents are always the ones that we'll try our hardest to get to first and then other folks as well when we have time. A lot of us aren't at our desks a lot for a million reasons. One, because of the lack of social distancing and masking. Two, because a lot of us are in committee meetings all the time. And three, because we're also, you know, we find little, little places to work quietly um, throughout the building. So, um, you know, in-person contact is certainly effective and important. I just don't want you to feel that because in-person contact might be how you feel most safe that you're gonna be less effective in talking with us. We can certainly make those outreaches and those contacts still effective and important. So those are really the ways to reach out to us. Another one, I guess, finally would be town halls. If, if your legislator's having districts or having meetings in her district or having Zoom office hours, things like that, it's a great way to reach out um, because that's when we're really focused on talking to constituents directly. That's kind of when we've set aside two hours to hear from you. And so keep keep note, keep a lookout on their Facebook page or their Twitter and kind of, you know, see when they have those office hours scheduled so that you can either go in person or, or hop onto a Zoom if they're doing it virtually. So that's a great way to reach out to them. When it comes to messaging, um, and I know you're gonna talk more specifically about messaging, but I'll just tell you what it's like from my perspective. Um, most of us have pretty thick skins. We get yelled at plenty. Uh, we get told that we're evil or bad or trying to bring down the state or trying to kill, you know, whatever. We hear it all. Um, I would argue that much like in human conversation, that's not the most effective way to communicate with people is to tell them why they're terrible people. Um, it's obviously better to reach out positively and say, I urge you to support this legislation because of this. And, um, and I think the more specific you can be, the better. So if you want your legislator to focus on um, issues that help Iowa's environment, tell me that generally speaking, it's not about a specific bill. I just want you to prioritize the environment. Here's why, good for economic development, good for clean air, good for clean water, right? Tell me the reasons that you think the environment is an important priority and should be for me. And that's helpful for me, right? That gives me context. If there's a specific bill, 
work closely with your advocates and your and the staff at the IEC to make sure you know where the bill is in the process. Um, there was a bill that I voted on recently, and I'll tell you this, I didn't know a lot about the bill. I read it, I talked to one of my colleagues who said that you can go either way on this, and I voted the way that my constituents wanted me to. I heard from several of them, I didn't have a personal preference on it, and so I voted that way. I then heard from those constituents again, thanking me for voting that way. It was effective for me because it showed that they were paying attention, and that matters, right? So make sure that you're not contacting me about a bill that um, we've already voted on, or that you're not contacting me about a bill that that isn't going to come up for weeks and weeks. Um, just try to try to think about the timing of when those bills come up, and you know, your your the IEC staff can certainly help you um, with that timing. It's not the end of the world. It's just a little easier and more effective. And then finally, um, there is something to be said for thanking um, legislators when they do vote the way you want, because we get yelled at when we vote the way you don't want, which is fine. Again, we're tough. We can take it. But it is, I think, effective to reconnect with the legislator um, after the fact, just to tell them that you were either disappointed with or grateful for their vote um, to, again, remind us that you're paying attention. So those are sort of the communication skill or communication tips that I've seen that work well when it comes to, to talking with legislators. I would just remind you that we're busy, um, but this is our job, and um, but we're also a part-time legislature. So we have day jobs, right? I teach at Drake. Um, we're here 110 days, um, and then the rest of the year, we're not in session, but we're still representing you, so we do our best, but we have day jobs. And so um, a little patience, a little grace is always helpful in that sense. Um, most of us will try to respond to people in both parties or non, you know, people who don't indicate a party. We don't look at that when we're responding to constituents too. But um, if, if it is just a message to yell at me with no real call to action in it, it's a little harder to to justify responding if somebody's yelling at me too. Does that make sense? So um, just make sure that there's a call to action in those messages as well. So does that make sense? It does. I have a question for you, Representative Converse. Yes. Um, oftentimes at the IEC or other organizations, we may be targeting messages to a subcommittee or um, members on a committee. And so people outside of your district might be contacting you. Right. Where do those fall in your hierarchy of importance? That's a great question. So. Um, if you can identify that so I know why you're contacting me specifically. So if it's, hey, I realize that you're on the subcommittee for this bill, that's why I'm reaching out to you. That's great. Then I can speak with you specifically about this bill, why I'm going to vote on it. Thank you for your information or why, you know, that we're considering a committee, whatever. I didn't vote for it. I don't plan to. I will. I won't. That's helpful for me. So that's maybe where I can go back to subject lines on emails or slips or phone calls, letting me know what you're calling about, why you're contacting me and what my call to action is. So those three parts really are most effective. I'm contacting you about House File 190. Um, I don't live in your district, but I do know that you're on the state government committee and I'm asking you to support the bill. Um, and so it's clear to me, there's very clear action in there so I can respond and know exactly. It just provides me with that context right away. Subject lines, if they can say, you know, message from a constituent regarding House File 90, or message as to the state government regarding House File 90 just helps us triage them as well. What other questions do people have? And you can use the Q&A function here in Zoom or um, you know, let us know. We'll be happy to, uh, to try to get them to Representative Con first, but we, we do also recognize she has another uh, meeting to get to. Yeah, that's fine. But um, yeah, does anyone have questions that we can, um, that we can I also, um, I can put my email in the chat and then, you, you know, folks are welcome to reach out to me about bills or just about how we do this. I would just um, want to remind you all that we, we are local gov government and we try to be as close to our, our constituents as we can be. So we're in your neighborhood. We're in the district. That's where we live. That's where we spend our time. And um, for folks who aren't near the Capitol, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning. So just know that those are the times we're back in the district. The rest of the time we're here at the Capitol. So um, we're thrilled to talk with you anytime, but that's kind of what, how our weeks get broken up during session. Let's see. A question in the chat about House File 44 um, to fund the trust. So um, is this about the Water and Land Legacy Trust? I will. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I saw that it had been introduced. I just, excuse me, I just got an email about it. Um, you know, I don't have 
uh, there are a lot of a lot of miss or moving parts to that, particularly with regard to how the penny is spent and and where the money goes and all of that. Um, I believe we need to fund the trust sooner rather than later. I don't know that um, it's going to get a lot of traction or that it's got a lot of traction as of right now. I'm not optimistic, but I've also not given up. If that's a fair balance. <laughs> That's sort of my theme this whole session, really. Not optimistic, but I haven't given up. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that insight, for sure. All right, um, let me just put my, um, where is the Iowa.gov? I think that's it. Great. You know, Thank you don't you. know your own phone number. Um, yes. So yeah, so feel free to reach out to me by email. Um, I'm happy to chat. And just, I wanna say for a minute, thank you so much to the important work of the IEC. The work you do is is important, and the advocacy that you that you spearhead really does help us to understand the issues, understand the impact, and be aware of what what's coming up next. It really is helpful. So thank you so much for all you do. Well, thank you for you for following along and uh, giving us some of your time today. You and bet. we hope that you have a great afternoon. You're welcome to come back and join us for any other. Uh, events we have going on this afternoon if you have time, but we know you're busy. So. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for including me. All right. All right. Thank Goodbye, you, Representative everyone. Converse. Thank have you. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye bye. All right. And now I'm going to turn things over to Alicia Vasto, our water policy and advocacy specialist uh, here at IEC, who's going to spend a few minutes with us talking about why you should get involved and some more details about the advocacy process for today. And again, if you have further questions, you can use that Q&A function uh, in the chat. All right. Do we have the next slide? There we go. <laughs> All right, so um, we just wanted to start off with a little bit of discussion about why it's important to be involved in advocacy. Um, obviously, since you all are attending our advocacy day, um, you have a little bit of understanding of this, but it's still nice to go over, um, you know, politics affects your life. Um, I think that we all really learned that, especially over the last year, um, that the decisions that are made can have a direct impact on your life. And that um, is especially true at the more local level. Um, and our political process is built to uh, accommodate and include public involvement. So it's really important for, you know, like what Representative Converse was saying that um, legislators hear from their constituents on different issues. Um, there's a lot of different points in the process where you can get involved and um, have, have your voice be heard. So um, it's, it's really crucial to the policy making process. And your voice is important on these issues. So legislators are not specialists in um, every single topic. They are generalists. They have a lot of bills coming across their desk um, that they have to read up on and learn and understand. So when they hear from you about something that you care about or something you might have expertise in, that is really, really helpful to them. Um, it helps them mo more fully understand the issues. So together we can have an impact. You know, IEC has hundreds of members from across the state and together we can leverage all of our voices to really have an impact on environmental um, legislation at the state capitol. So when they hear from many of us, um, those are the, the issues that get their attention. Uh, next slide. There you go. Okay, so since we all have a little bit uh, different level of experience with how things work at the State House, um, I just wanted to kind of briefly go over how it works because it is kind of complicated if you have never um, really gotten involved or paid much attention before this. So, um, you know, basically um, we have two different chambers, right? The Senate and the House. Um, the red and blue, you know, kind of it, it shows the makeup of the um, chambers right now um, between Republicans and Democrats. So a bill can be introduced in either the Senate or the House. And basically it follows the same process within that chamber. So it gets assigned to a committee and a subcommittee that is relevant to that bill. Um, then within the subcommittee, it is debated and voted on. 
and uh, the subcommittee is a good chance for the public to have their voices heard on a particular bill. So that's a really good time to get involved as at the subcommittee hearing. Um, then if it get, gets recommended for passage, it goes up to the full committee and the committee votes. And if they pass it, it goes up to the chamber level and then it has the whole floor debate. So once it goes through that process in one chamber, it is then over to the other chamber and goes through the same process. So again, there's another chance to have your voice heard um, as it moves through the same process in the other chamber. So if it gets passed all the way through both uh, chambers, it, th it then goes to the governor for signing or for vetoing if she uh, chooses to do that. Um, a couple of important dates, um, and this is kind of unique to Iowa is that we have a funnel system. So it's an agreed upon timeline to move bills through the process uh, in a timely manner. So the first funnel is uh, a deadline by which bills have to make it out of the committee of the chamber that they're introduced in. So if it was introduced in the House and in the uh, Natural Resources Committee, it would have to be passed out of that committee in order to continue moving through the process um, after that. So um, this year, the first funnel date is March 5th. So it's uh, one week out. Um, so that'll be a really important deadline for these bills. Um, and there'll be a lot of activity happening during funnel week to ensure that bills make it out of committee so that they can continue on through the process. Um, ways and means bills and appropriations bills are not subject to funnel. So those ones can be um, debated and uh, continue to go through the process after first funnel. Then the second funnel date is when the bills have to be out of the committee in the other chamber. Um, so that date, I believe, is April 2nd. So um, in order for them to be considered by the whole floor of the chamber, they would have to be out of the committee of the other chamber. Um, so that is basically an overview of the process. Um, you know, our organization can really help uh, really our role is to help keep track of where bills are in this process. It can be very difficult as an individual to try to track bills through the chamber. Things can happen very, very quickly. So, um, you know, we try to let you know with action alerts um, and, and other communications about where bills are in the process and when is a great time to get involved and have your voice heard. There we go. All right, so um, so if you're going to go talk to uh, your legislator or some other decision maker, um, how do you craft a message for them? So um, Representative Congress gave a pretty good overview of this. Uh, we have a message box exercise that can make it really, really easy to tailor your message if you aren't sure where to start or how to think about it. Um, we, this is kind of, you can go to the next slide. Um, this is probably, you may have seen this in other forms. So this is kind of a combination of uh, uh, different message box exercises that I've seen um, that help you work through, you know, how you're gonna say what you need to say. So basically um, you can start anywhere in the message box, but I would start in the center with the issue. Uh, you can click, click. So this is where you describe, you know, what your issue is and how it relates to you, um, what your background is with it. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything really, um, you know, uh, mind blowing. It can be very simple, but still make it personal to you. The next we would uh, talk about the problem and you can click. So what is the problem? If you didn't explain it with uh, the, when you were describing the issue, you really explicitly say, what is the problem that you're trying to solve um, by talking about a solution? So um, make sure that that is really clear. The next would be the value piece. You can click. So why does this matter to you and your community? Um, so 
this is where it can be really helpful to do a little bit of background on the decision maker that you're talking to and learn about their values. And you can really easily um, connect this to the values that they hold so it rings more um, relevant with them. Um, but really connecting to that value statement about why it's important. Then next is the ask, and this is the specific thing that you're asking them to do. So like Representative Congress said, um, making sure that it's very clear and simple that you're asking them to take a specific action, um, that you, if you're uh, uh, talking about a specific bill and you want them to vote a certain way, that you're leaving with that with them um, and not leaving it uh, open-ended. And then lastly, the vision piece is kind of a, um, what does the world look like? You know, kind of ending on a high note. So um, if the problem is solved in, in this way, or if, you know, this solution works out, what are, what are the benefits of that? Um, so that can um, just be a nice way to kind of close out your, your message and leave that with them um, at the end. So how to contact decision makers. So Representative Compress went over this, but we'll go over it. Um, basically the way that we think about it is different levels of engagement. So different levels of the time that you have to invest in uh, the action and the um, amount of effort basically. So, uh, So low investment actions are things um, that you can do pretty easily. And these are especially good in a time during a pandemic when you might not wanna go and meet uh, physically in person, but making a phone call, sending an email or mailing a letter postcard are all uh, really good options. And one thing to note is that even if you, know, you don't have a lot of time to invest in um, going up to the Capitol and making an in-person meeting or something like that, any action that you take is really important and really helpful. So anything that you can do that's tailored to your um, capacity and preference, um, do that. You know, if you're just beginning as an advocate, um, some of these low investment actions are, are the best things you can start off with. The next would be medium investment actions. So attending a town hall or a listening session or public hearing um, and getting a little bit more involved by asking a question or providing a comment, um, taking notes at the meeting. Another thing that you can do is write an opinion piece for your local newspaper. So if you really wanna shine a light on an issue um, that is timely and relevant, uh, getting it out there more in the public can be really helpful. And especially if um, you know, your local decision maker uh, will probably, could probably see it and that would have more of an impact on them. So really bringing that issue to the forefront through a writing piece is an excellent opportunity. And that's something that, that we try to help out with a lot here at IEC. So um, we can help you write pieces and get them placed in the paper. And in one of our breakout sessions later this afternoon, um, Angelisa is going to be talking through some tips and tricks for, for doing that. Then lastly are our high investment actions. So this would be requesting an in-person meeting, going to the Capitol and, and speaking with your legislator. Um, you can also organize an event for people, uh, your neighbors and friends and invite them over to maybe watch a video on an, on an issue or have a discussion, um, you know, just kind of creating and building out your own personal advocacy network and building support for your issue. Um, that can be a really great action to take. Although again, of course, this is um, in non-pandemic times when it's safe to uh, get, a, get together in groups, but of course you can do this over uh, Zoom or, or you know, virtually. Um, and then, of course, attending a lobby day or advocacy day. So if we were having our regular advocacy day at the Capitol, we would all be uh, together in person and meeting and having the opportunity to go talk to our legislators. So um, that's a really great opportunity. If you've never come to our advocacy day in person at the Capitol, 
uh, we hope that we'll see you there next year and um, we can help you through the process of actually going up and, and sending in a note to, to call out your legislator and that kind of thing. So, um, but we're very glad that you all are here virtually. It's uh, fantastic. All right, then we'll talk about just a few advocacy tools. So obviously uh, um, the legislative website um, has a lot of information on it. You know, you can find uh, your legislators and uh, all the legislators um, and their committee assignments and subcommittee um, assignments. And um, you can find information about different bills. So there's a lot of information on there and it can be a little bit difficult to dig into. Um, but we will talk about the find your legislator tool. So if you don't know who your legislator is, um, we can go to the next slide. There we go. Um, there's a really easy tool on the legislative website that you can go to. So you just enter your address and search, and then it will pull up um, your uh, le legislators. So in this example, I entered IEC's um, office address and you can go ahead and click. And that is, is what popped up for the Senator and the representative if I lived at uh, IEC's office in downtown Des Moines. So um, if you don't know who your legislator is, I would really encourage you to go and do that. Um, send them a message. You know, you can find their email right through uh, the legislative website and um, let them know who you are and, and what you care about. So that is a excellent tool if you're just starting out. Uh, next. So we do um, have some key issues um, that we've kind of highlighted as things to talk about with legislators uh, today, if you are going to message them. Um, if you're joining us for environmental mixology this evening, we're going to be doing uh, postcard writing together. And we have some templates for, for those postcards, um, postcard messages. So these are um, some of the issues that are, are highlighted um, with that. And so I'll just say, you know, for the water program right now, um, just general support for water quality and natural resources is always um, a good message to share. So related to health and related to outdoor recreation, uh, really make it personal if you wanna share those messages. There's also a couple of bills that are moving through right now that we're tracking. Um, one is the SF-352 and it's uh, changes to the forest reserve program, which would reduce the forest and fruit trees tax exemption, um, which would result in more trees being cut down, which is not uh, what we need right now in the state. So um, that is something that you could focus on. And there's also a soil health bill that Representative Momsen um, just introduced. And I have the bill number now, it's HF 646. So um, supporting public health or soil health initiatives um, is, is something that would be really great to talk about right now. Then on the energy program side, um, another kind of general support for renewable energy um, is something that the energy program has asked supporters to, uh, to write messages about. So some of the key points you know, regarding renewable energy would be their cost effectiveness, the high quality jobs that they create, and that renewable energy is reliable and resilient in the face of climate change. So, then one of the bills that they are specifically tracking is this HF 221, um, which would expand the state solar investment tax credit. So they're asking for support with that effort. So, so next slide. So if you wanna learn more about all of those issues and the other bills that we're tracking, I'd encourage you to go to IEC's legislative portal. So on our website, um, we have links to a bunch of different resources, including our program priorities and our legislative priorities, and then uh, weekly bill trackers. So we will list the bills that we are um, tracking and their current status, um, and that can help you with to identify some issues that you might want to talk with your legislators about. 
So there's a lot of really great resources on there and links to the legislative website as well. So I think that might be all that I have. So I, I know that Jessica is here and wanted to make some comments about uh, messaging. So I'll throw it to you. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for giving me a few minutes here. The lobby team from Policy Works is all up at the Capitol, um, you know, working on the good issues just laid out so they couldn't be here today. I actually lead our public relations efforts, but work very closely with the team at IEC on, on all of the energy issues as well. I just wanted to jump in and talk a little bit too to piggyback off of that presentation about some effective messaging, especially in terms of clean energy. Um, we know that some words unfortunately become some sometimes some political debates or landmines. So while many of us are personally motivated about solving the climate crisis, we know that others maybe aren't quite as motivated by that, but they still believe in and care about clean energy. So one um, tip we often give people is just to make sure you understand your audience. So, you know, depending on the audience, maybe we're just talking about a, you know, a resilient and reliable grid, the, the job creation, the economic benefit to local communities and rural Iowa and farmers. So that's one messaging tip as you're writing an email or speaking with the legislator, just to kind of keep in mind who your audience is and what the most effective messaging might be for that person. So we can all work together toward that North Star, um, just might have different messaging paths along the way. Um, so that's one tip I wanted to kind of leave you with. Another thing, um, like mentioned, the op-eds are super important. We talk a lot about 360 degree advocacy because we want legislators to not only hear hear and see issues while they're in the Capitol or back home at those constituent meetings, but also see and feel it elsewhere. So an op-ed in their local newspaper is a huge deal, something that they pay attention to. Another really critical tool for advocacy is social media. So making sure that you're sharing information about these issues on social media, and sometimes even tagging legislators when it's applicable is another really good tool to help continue that advocacy online. And I think one thing that people often don't do is thank legislators. So if you even post something and thank a legislator and tag them in it on Twitter or Facebook, it's amazing how a thank you is remembered for a long time. So they often hear the negative comments, but the more you can try to thank legislators on issues publicly on social media is another really good advocacy tool as well. Um, so just a couple more tips and tricks to follow up the great presentation. Didn't have too much more to add from that, but we're, we're very proud to help IEC and, and work on these issues. Great. Thank you very much, Jessica, for that. Yeah, um, I thought that Representative Confer's comments about thanking legislators for doing good work was really helpful. I, I think I tend to forget that myself. I also really thought her comment about contacting legislators, even if you know that their vote agrees with what you're thinking. I have said that to myself many times, you know, that, oh, well, I know my legislator is going to vote the way I'm already feeling. And it's never occurred to me to think about how they track that information, um, you know, as part of their, uh, as part of their work, you know, to deal with their constituents. Um, and when they're talking with other, other legislators, that it's important to know who's for as well as against. So I'm going to get better about doing that for sure. Um, so we have uh, plenty of time here at the end for questions. We did have one question uh, already in the Q&A. And so I would remind folks that um, we've got time here to answer your questions about anything related to messaging and advocacy. And um, so use the Q&A. Uh, function there. If you scroll your mouse down to the bottom, that should the bottom of the page that should pop the Q and A up for you. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know too that this portion of Alicia's presentation was just a small portion of a larger training uh, that IEC offers. And we're going to be doing a full two and a half hour virtual advocacy training on March twenty sixth. Alicia, I believe uh, the twenty third. 23rd, excuse me, March 23rd in the evening. And so um, we'll get that link and throw it in the chat here if you're interested in attending that training. She'll go more into, you know, learning and researching issues and researching legislators and, and further honing and crafting their message. Um, but we're also really appreciative of Jessica and the Policy Works team um, and their communications efforts uh, on our behalf. Policy Works uh, is our uh, partner for our, primarily our energy program. And then we work with Angela Davis uh, with AKD, AKD, I can never say that, AKD Legal uh, on our water program. Um, she is at a subcommittee meeting today uh, as well. So we would love to attend. 
So um, Jim was wondering, can a committee chair decline to have a vote on a bill and thus bury it? Do either of you know more about that information? Yeah, my understanding is um, that the committee chair, you know, schedules the um, the meetings and therefore the votes. And so if they don't put it on the schedule, then it is not going to come up for debate or for vote. So um, I, you know, recently heard that there were not a lot of committee meetings scheduled for the Natural Resources Committee within the House. And that was all due to um, the chair of that committee just um, only having certain bills that he was interested in um, bringing up. So there haven't been very many meetings in that committee. So it definitely depends on um, the, the chairs of the committees. And, um, you know, even if you aren't their constituent, reaching out and letting them know that Iowans care about this issue and want, want to see it move forward or want to see a meeting regarding this um, so that they feel that pressure to um, schedule more of those meetings and make sure that relevant topics are getting uh, debated and move forward. Um, one question that I uh, am always, I've been thinking about more this session as we've talked with legislators is how many of them we hear say, you know, that they like personally written messages as opposed, as opposed to form letters. And as we know, our advocacy uh, tools, our action alert tools are designed to make it easy so that you can just take a message and forward it, uh, which we heard from Representative Confers that, of course, she still tracks those and, and watches for them to come through. Um, and so the one point I wanted to make for both IEC and a lot of our other partners um, that provide action alert uh, tactics, that oftentimes that box uh, does allow you to edit copy so that you can go in and add your own sentence at the start, introducing yourself, uh, you know, it's intended to be able to just be sent directly to the legislator or the committee chair, whomever, uh, but it can also serve as sort of a draft or a starting point for you so that you can personalize it more and it doesn't come across as just a form letter um, if, you're, if you're concerned about that. And so I, I did want to make that point that I'm not aware of, you know, any of our partners that do alerts that, that you can't um, do some editing in some way uh, to make that a more targeted uh, message. So um, I wanted to make that clear. I think also with those form um, emails and alerts, it really depends on the legislator themselves. Um, I know that some will track basically the number that they see come through um, and that can have an impact on, on their um, thoughts about it or their decisions. Um, so it's always better to personalize a message. Um, but if, if you, don't have the time and you want to send it, um, a lot of legislators will still, you know, track the, the number, the number that they see and that can have an impact as well. So we've still got some time for, for other questions. If you want to use the chat or even raise your hand, um, we can, we can call on you. I did also appreciate uh, Representative Confers talking about how they do pay attention to messages from non-constituents uh, when they sit on a committee. And so I think making that point in the messages that we're contacting you because you are part of a certain subcommittee or committee uh, is also good to know, um, you know, that those messages can be effective. So, um, yeah. And Just that's another important point about identifying, oh, sorry. Oh, I go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that's another important point about identifying uh, your decision maker. So identifying the right, right person uh, it, within the process um, that you need to be speaking to at that moment um, to send a message about um, moving something forward or voting against it. Um, that that might not yeah, necessarily be your legislator, that that could be a committee chair or a subcommittee chair. Um, so being able to identify those people um, is important. And that's one of the things that we can help you with. Great. Well, I know some of the names that we've seen, you know, we've got almost 50 people uh, on the call with us right now, which is great, 50 advocates who can share their voice and send messages when, an appro when appropriate. And so we really appreciate you being here. Um, Alicia shared both our legislative portal and also the legislative uh, website um, that the state manages. Our legislative portal on IEC's website does have a link to that state portal. We also have a really helpful video um, by our partner Cody from Center for Rural Affairs that he made for their 
legislative portal explaining how to navigate and find things um, on that site. So that's a really helpful tool. Uh, so we would encourage you to visit there. We do have a find your legislator functionality um, on that portal as well. And so um, if you haven't visited the legislative portal, we'll make sure that we put that in the chat. Uh, and then I do believe um, we'll also be able to provide uh, the message box tool, Alicia, where you're going to make that available as a handout. Yes, I will uh, find that on our website and share the link in the chat. Yeah, great. Um, Jessica, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? I just thought of one other thing on the social media front. So in addition to helping to support legislative issues that we might all be advocating for at the Capitol, it can also help fill an education gap that we know unfortunately exists with a lot of these issues, you know, especially energy. It's, it's a really technical issue. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't really understand how the infrastructure and the grid and everything works. And I think that was really underscored by last week's situation in Texas. So I don't know if your news feeds were anything like mine, but you know, there's a lot of misinformation floating around. I know IEC, I know Carrie and others were on the forefront of trying to correct some of that in the news, but even finding those articles that share some of the truth about how it, you know, it wasn't wind turbines freezing up. It was just a, a crash course across the grid and, and every form of energy failed because they weren't weatherized. So even finding things like that to help share on social media, to help get that education gap filled can also help with legislative issues when you're up at the Capitol, because hopefully you don't have to spend as much time correcting this misinformation if we can help kind of up the, the education level of, of a lot of folks. So I think there's a lot of value in, in social media. Um, of course, it can also stray the wrong way if we're not also trying to help share um, factual information to help correct any, correct any myths out there. So for a lot of reasons, social media is a great avenue for advocacy, and it can also be a challenge because you also have to jump some hurdles to correct some misinformation as well. So I'm um, just Indeed. throw that in there too. Indeed, that's a great point. Thank you, Jessica. Um, we did get another question uh, here. Do we have a list of particularly important legislators to contact such as committee chairs or people on the fence? And I think Alicia, we probably addressed that a lot with our action alerts, but do you wanna talk about that a little bit? How we sort of keep track of who we're, we're connecting with and, and how individuals can, can help with that? Yeah, so um, we we do have a talking points document for that are, that are for bills um, that we're tracking right now, at least in the water program. Um, Angelise, I'm not sure if the energy program. Um, I believe that they have one ready, but I'm not sure if it's uploaded. We'll we'll do, we'll double check that and make sure that gets in there. Yeah, we need to we we'll get those uploaded to share with you all. But they're um, related to specific bills that we're tracking and are at a good point uh, to talk to your uh, legislators about right now. Um, for for specific committee chairs or people on the fence, um, we do send out action alerts when it's um, crucial crucial to contact those people at that time. Um, so right now the general, the talking points that we have are more uh, for your uh, representative or senator um, for, for that specific bill and not targeted at a uh, committee uh, chairperson or something like that. But if those opportunities come up, then we do send out action alerts um, to make sure that that uh, gets out in a timely fashion. So yeah, that's, that's one of our, our roles with our bill tracking is to uh, keep track of where the bills are in the process. And then if we see that there's an opportunity for our coalition members to make a difference and have their voices heard, then we wanna take advantage of that. So that's not something that we kind of keep a running document of, I would say, cause it kind of, you know, crops up um, and is something that we just uh, send out um, as it happens. Um, but yeah, for the talking points, we will definitely share those. And you can also look at our legislative priority documents, which are on the legislative portal. And those have just good general, you know, talking points about the issues that we are uh, tracking and prioritizing during the legislative session. Great. Thank you, Alicia. And yes, if uh, IEC um, sends an action alert, it is typically built to target specific legislators that we're trying to reach. So it might be a committee chair about making sure a bill gets on their schedule. It might be all the members of a particular committee that are going to be voting soon on a particular issue. 
Um, it might be statewide because we want every legislator, legislator to get contacted. But as we draft those, if you receive an action alert notification from IEC saying take action, we have drilled down to determine who are the important people that we want to contact about this issue to make it easy for you. Um, and sometimes it's, we only want the constituents that report to those specific legislators, and sometimes we open it up wide. And um, so we do that. We, we have those discussions in connection with our program partners, our lobby partners. They know, you know, they're talking with people up at the Capitol and where things are at. Sometimes we'll start writing an action alert and then hold it because something changed uh, that very day. That happened to us just earlier this week. So um, things are constantly moving, and we send those action alerts, and it is a critical time. So you can feel really confident if we send you something, um, you know, we're serious that it really does mean, you know, get in touch now or, or sign up for this particular thing, which can be helpful. So um, I don't I see, gonna, oh, go ahead, Jessica. Yeah, I was gonna mention on the energy side that House File 221 um, that Alicia mentioned earlier, that is a ways and means bill. So as she mentioned, it's funnel proof because it sits in that committee. So there's not quite as much of an urgency um, but if you're looking for legislators to reach out to, if you are a constituent of anyone on the Ways and Means Committee in either the House or the Senate, they definitely are a target for that legislation. Um, luckily, you know, solar is a pretty bipartisan issue, but there is a price tag attached to that bill. You know, we're trying to pay off that wait list. We're trying to get the program expanded and decoupled. Um, so it, it really comes down to what is going to fit into the budget, and we really need to make that economic case, how this is really going to help with the economic recovery from the pandemic, getting money back in the, the pockets of farmers, businesses, residents that have installed solar. Um, so, so definitely feel free to reach out to the Ways and Means members, especially in the House, because that's where the bill is right now, and then the Senate as well. So um, not quite as urgent because it's, it's funnel proof, but that will definitely be the committee that gets to decide the fate of that bill. Yeah, and, and to make a point, the same uh, legislative tool that you use to find your legislator, you can look up who are the committee members on the Senate Ways and Means Committee or the House Ways and Means Committee to determine if they are indeed one of your legislators. Or if you look up your legislator, their page will list the committees that they sit on so that you can see uh, what they're involved in or, or what they do. So, well, we've got a few minutes left. We have, uh, you know, if we don't have any further questions, um, we created a, a new video as part of our environmental mixology event tonight um, featuring Carrie Johansson, our energy program director uh, and longtime, um, you know, she does a lot of advocacy work and has been involved in a lot of uh, legislative issues. And so we talked with her about what advocacy means. We thought this might be a good way to sort of end the session and send you out with something kind of meaningful. Uh, following this at 1.30, we just have a nice half hour window for you to meet with exhibitors. So we hope that you will, uh, you know, pop in and say hi. You know, some of the booths are doing giveaways so you can enter there. Uh, and then the breakout sessions can start at 2 p.m. So you can log back in. You'll be prompted to choose the breakout session that you'd like to join. Maybe I'll see a few of you at the writing op as and uh, you know, LTEs and just talking a little bit more about that. Um, but I hope that you'll all join us there. We thank you for coming today. We hope that you'll think about joining us for our longer training. We'll also put that link in the chat um, once uh, the registration is available. So uh, we'll share this, this great video from um, one of our longtime warriors up at the Capitol. Carrie does great work and we're, we're so lucky to have you know, up there uh, doing what she does alongside Alicia and Ingrid and all the rest of our team members um, who make this uh, work all possible. So I'm going to share my screen, which I always kind of struggle with a little bit, but one moment and uh, we will enjoy um, a nice video here, perhaps if I can find it. Where did it go? Maybe I'm going to share it. One moment. It's coming. I promise. Now, hopefully we should see it. Mm 
Maybe not. Maybe my video won't work for me today. To make a change to policy or a situation, something that you care about and you want to be different than it is right now. At IEC, we work in a variety of different venues to advance change for Iowa's environment, and primarily in the areas of clean water and clean energy. We work up at the legislature, we work uh, with, with state agencies, through the governor's office, wherever we think we can advance a, a cleaner, safer Iowa. There is a lot that goes on during the legislative session. It's really our crazy busy time where we are tracking bills that are introduced every day. We are letting our supporters know about what's going on up at the Capitol, especially at key moments, like there's a subcommittee that's scheduled on a bill that we're either in support of or opposing. Uh, we are letting folks know the status of legislation, letting people know if there's um, an event they should attend over the weekend, a, a legislative forum where they might be able to have influence. We're also up at the Capitol talking to legislators directly and talking to our allies um, and maybe people we're not allied with to see if there's common ground that can be reached on legislation that's pending. Outside of legislative session, we do a lot of education of legislators. So every summer we do clean energy tours. Uh, we take folks around to see solar installations, energy efficiency, home weatherization projects. Um, we are building relationships with the groups outside of session. We're doing research and education that drives our policy priorities for the coming session. So there's really a lot that goes into it rather than just you know stepping into the legislati legislative session um, and not having built already key components around policy and relationships. So as an individual, you can find out what's going on at the legislature by being connected with groups that you that cover the issues that you care about, and then you know, follow along during the session and outside of session as well to find opportunities to meet one-on-one -on -one with your legislator. That's really the most uh, effective way to build a relationship and, um, and make a difference. Um, outside of a one-on-one -on -one meeting, you can write a letter to your legislator, you can call them, um, you can respond to an action alert and that's sort of the order of effectiveness. Really the in-person relationship, long-term relationship building is the most effective way, but certainly make your voice heard um, as the opportunity arises in what, whatever way that you have the capability to do. I really like the relationships that I've gotten to build through doing advocacy work. Uh, we went through a really epic fight over energy efficiency in 2018. Some of the people I worked with and met through that process are people I consider friends today uh, just because you go through something together and it really uh, it builds a bond. Um, I also really enjoy uh, the strategy work, trying to figure out who do we need to have at the table, what are the arguments that are going to be compelling, how do we do things in, at the right time to, to really uh, hit this out of the park. So. I think, you know, advocacy can be kind of like a big puzzle and when you get all the pieces in place, it can be a lot of fun. An individual Iowan absolutely can make a difference in moving forward things at the legislature. Your story might be the one that flips somebody from being a supporter to being an opponent or vice versa of a bill. You're really the best person to tell your story. Um, and your story has power, and so I definitely encourage people to bring that to their advocacy work at the Capitol. Bring it with you, tell your legislator why you care about an issue and what it means in your life, and you can absolutely make a difference. All right. So we will leave you all on that hopeful note today, if I can figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> Uh, leave you all on that hopeful note today um, to think about taking, you know, messages forward. We hope you'll take some time today to perhaps, you know, send an email or make a phone call uh, to the legislator uh, or utilize some of the, the resources that we provided to you know, send a postcard or, or something along those lines. Um, but we always welcome questions. We always welcome your input, uh, you know, to the IEC inbox. You can give us a call. Um, we would love to hear from you and hear more about the things and the issues that so um, thank you for being here for our advocacy training. We hope that you'll consider joining us for our longer training come, uh, 
come later this March and um, that you'll take part in our action alerts as you see them. Uh, and for now, we'll let you go to uh, maybe meet with some exhibitors and uh, hopefully see you back at two o'clock uh, for some of the breakout sessions. Thanks very much. Have a great afternoon. Bye all.